hey, it's Chrissy Lulu. So, first things first, I want to apologize if there's any noise, there's a bit of dancing going on above me. But anyways, welcome to another video. Uh, today's topic I want to talk about is, which is better, coming up with art originally, just like popping and pulling things, or I guess popping things out of your head, pulling things out of your head. Popping sounds like a gross word, but yeah, I hope you guys know what I mean. Or using references. Like, is something worse off or worse because you've used a reference to draw it? Or does it not matter? Um, I kind of want to try and start a little discussion on this. I always love these little videos to try and make you think, try and start a discussion. So if you really want to join the discussion, make a video of your own, comment in the and comment down below, you know. Um, but the reason why I wanted to talk about it in this video is because if you can't tell, I used, I drew a bottle and a table from reference. Um, I had a, a Snapple bottle sitting on my laptop and I used that as my reference. And while I don't think it's worse than my other art, I honestly think that just because it's original and you come with it from your own mind, I don't think that makes it better than something that uses reference. I personally think reference is a great asset to doing any kind of art. So I, of course, am fine with anyone using an asset, or a reference, sorry. Anyone using a reference, uh, I do it all the time in my art class, actually. We always have our, our live nude models and we reference them to draw. And I personally do not think just because it's original is better. You could draw something that's anatomically wrong all over the place, like some of my old art, but have it be 100% totally original right from your head. So I think, personally for me, just because you're using a reference doesn't make anything better. Um, I think you definitely do need to bring some originality to your art though, um, just because you do like a hyper-realistic picture of an orange doesn't mean a lot. Like, if what you can do is something a printer could easily do, I don't think you're using your skills in the right place, honestly. I think when you're doing reference and just any kind of art in general, you need to have your own flair to things. And it's not just how you draw things. Like, I know I have my own way with drawing people, um, especially when I'm drawing my little cartoony people. Like little Mika here, she's got her hair is drawn the way I always draw hair, her eyes are drawn the way I always draw hair, and that's just the way I draw people. And like the line weight and everything too, that's just all what I do. But if you're doing stuff like what I do in my art classes, like your fine arts and stuff, it's not s like... You're not going to get noticed, I guess, if you're not original. Like, if I think you need a healthy mix of both, if anything is kind of what I'm saying. Um, you need a mix between, if you're going to use reference. Reference, I think, is very important and is very helpful to getting anatomy right and helping you arrange stuff on your page. I mean, even Picasso used reference. He'd have live models and he'd draw them. Do I personally like Picasso? No, not very much, but I do. He did bring his own flair to it. It wasn't just the same thing that everyone else was doing. And if you look at different Renaissance painters, you can say the same thing. Like, Raphael wasn't doing exactly what Leonardo DiCaprio was doing. Leonardo DiCaprio kind of had shadow as a big kind of part in his work. There was things hidden in the shadow, and that was kind of part of his um, 
process was working. If you look at the Mona Lisa, there's things hidden in the shadows behind her, like a path that leads to nowhere. And Raphael's art, on the other hand, is very bright. It's not hidden in shadow. It's like full light, bright colors. The red is super vibrant in his piece of Madonna in the Meadow. I believe it's Madonna in the Meadow. And then Leonardo DiCaprio did Madonna on the Rocks. But in this painting, Madonna in the Meadow, the red is rich. The blue is rich. All the colors are so beautiful. And that like, even though they're part of the same movement, they did their own thing. So, I think it's very important for even us to have our own skills. Like, a lot of the time in my art class, one of my main kind of things that is mine is I'll always do... I typically do a lot of diagonal hatching to color in areas, like you can see I'm doing right now, right here. To color in, I'm coloring all in the same direction, and I'll do this to create form. I'll go all in the same direction to create form rather than curving my pencil lines to help accentuate the form. I typically just use the diagonal hatching of the pencil and my sh colors in shading to create this illusion of space in turning. So, I mean, I can show... If anyone wants to see stuff like that, um, I can show you what I mean. I don't know if it makes any sense. Sorry, it's kind of out camera right here. Um, and I also do like to experiment with color and stuff. My teacher says, like, my use of color is kind of very unique and stuff. Um, but, like, that's kind of something that I personally don't like about a lot of hyper-realistic art, like, art that looks like you could have taken a picture and someone actually drew it. While I do agree that that, that it takes a lot of skill to do something like that, um, um, I'd say something that is very important in everyone's art is leaving your mark in it. Um, you don't want to erase your hand from your drawing, um, which is kind of something that I don't like about the color field painters who just would blob art of just, like, I can't remember his name, it was Jackson Pollock, who just let paint drip on his camp canvas and stuff and spill on his canvas, like that kind of movement, but yeah. Anyways, what do you guys think? Agree, disagree? What are your points, or what are you, your views on this topic? So yeah, click the like bucket button, comment down below, let me know what you think. Subscribe if you want to stick, stay in touch, see new videos. I really do like doing these discussion videos. I haven't gotten many responses to them yet, but at the same time. I only have six subscribers at the moment, so hopefully that can change at some point. Tell your friends about me. Share me. That's that's how you get discussion started, having people know what's going on. But yeah. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!